I've been asked to shed some light on um, how we interact with data when designing end user experiences and design partners, um, particularly as it comes to the future of healthcare. So I'm going to focus on healthcare for this session. Um, as you probably know, healthcare is um, one of those industries where being able to interpret and digest data rapidly is of the up utmost importance. But healthcare is going through a profound change at the moment, a shift towards um, precision healthcare models, where it's about measurable outcomes and um, creating value and not volume. And we believe that connectivity, data analytics and science and design can really help build meaningful experiences that lead to measurable outcomes. So I'm going to focus on um, three specific trends that we're witnessing in our industry as they relate to healthcare connected services um, with um, more affordable and more powerful sensors, how they're impacting um, and creating um, the possibilities for exceptional new experiences in healthcare. Um, empathetic data. So with these new experiences, how can we apply the right filter and find the drivers for those filters to present the right data to each of the users in the system? And empowered patients. With this new shift, there is a huge trend towards people being able to self-manage their own conditions. Before I do that, I'll give a little bit of introduction on the kind of work we do in Design Partners. So um, we're a product and interaction design agency. So we work with brands around the world to design products, both digital and physical. Um, and our, our, our purpose is to help grow these brands through designing exceptional experiences that will uh, hopefully make people's life better. Um, we have a dedicated healthcare design team, and they're um, ISO 13485 certified, and they have mastery in human factors engineering. And I'll give you a little snapshot of the kind of work that we do. Um, it's quite varied. We often design products that are complex. They often have a, a physical component and a digital interface. Um, and in healthcare, a lot of the work we do is to build a relationship between the patient and between the physician, um, either one which be could be using the products that we collaborate with our clients to design. Um, other examples in the, in the industrial sector where we really focus on optimizing efficiencies and enhancing productivity, again, through use of uh, smart technology. And sometimes our, our, our briefs are purely digital, where they're about creating a, a joyful experience for the end customer, or sometimes they're purely physical. Um, and this is a product relating to the eSports comment from the last panel. Most of the time, our, our, our design work is about the future and about cutting edge. This example is a virtual reality glove that we designed in collaboration with the Tyndall Institute. And this, for example, could be worn by a surgeon. Um, it could translate his micro-movements of his hand while he remotely operates. Um, and we often do a lot of work in the digital space as well, where we're at the moment exploring augmented reality, um, particularly using the HoloLens and how we can interact with live vital data. So that's a brief snapshot of the kind of work that we do. So connected services, this huge confluence of connectivity, of data analytics, of machine learning and artificial intelligence, it's, it's really driving this push towards new and exciting opportunities in healthcare. There is an estimated uh, 75 billion connected devices by 2025, I believe. Someone needs to update this meme. And that number scares me, not because of the, not because of the, the fear of technology, but 75 billion connected devices. How, how many of those are going to be connected for a meaningful reason um, and not for the sake of it? So talking about meaningful reasons, so how do we, how do we view connected service and create a, a service that's meaningful? So in this brief example, here's a patient who might have an implantable smart device, IoT device, that um, is connected to some uh, secure cloud, analyzing their data, and it helps them self-manage their condition. Often there's a, there's a GP or a physician involved who can analyze that same data and either contact the patient directly or send them interventions through the system. Typically, the pharmaceutical company is involved in, in this instance. Maybe the patient is aged or has a or is obese, and how the, the system relates to the medications that they need to take. There's usually a, 
a nurse um, who, who might have a triage system, who can respond to uh, notifications of emergency. And we're designing lots of these distance systems in, in, in their healthcare team. And there's always a, a family member or a caregiver who's a crucial part of the health and well being of the patient. So these are all interacting with very complex data, but in different forms with different needs and different motivations. And then there's always other smart devices that can feed into the system with these 75 billion smart devices forming the Internet of Things. And, and that phrase, Internet of Things, really bugs me because it's focusing on things, on, on inanimate objects. Whereas, in fact, when we're designing these experiences, we need to, sh we need to shift away from thinking about the, the technology in the system. The technology is just the enabler to create these meaningful experiences that can deliver measurable outcomes. So we need to actually shift away from this technology and look at the people and focus on what are the needs and motivations of each of these people and to, to build a system around the, the people. Um, so it's taking a, um, a user-first approach, not a tech-first approach, which is, which is a mind shift. The second thing I'll talk about is empathetic data. So with all of these different people in the, in the system, how do, you, how do we filter the data and present it to all of the different, all of the different stakeholders? This example is a, is, is a, a physical device that we designed with um, uh, ARC devices. It's a non-touch thermometer. Um, clear benefits of non-touch, obviously, uh, you don't have to sterilize the device after every use, but um, this being a connected device, you can send the patient's um, uh, measurements directly to their uh, electronic healthcare records, um, or the vastness of how, um, and thermometry is, is a really underrated diagnostic tool. So the, 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 the amount of analysis that could be done on this data that hasn't been done before opens up amazing opportunities. And we could present an immense amount of data to the patient or to the physician at point of care. But when we analyzed what the real needs and motivations were at the time, we boiled this experience down to, to one button and one number that was appropriate for that particular experience to create the most efficient scenario. And that's true for all the, all the data that we work with. We, we can analyze it in lots of different ways. Um, and when we're designing it for the physician in the back room, you would take the same data and present it in a completely different way than at point of care. But sometimes when, when we apply these empathetic filters, the, the, the end result is as simple as, you're doing great, well done. Um, and our, our clients can sometimes find that difficult because um, we're kind of boiling down the, the immense possibilities um, of their fantastic technology and the work we're doing together down to this simple message. But, but even positive affirmations are part of the, of the patient engagement uh, system. And simplifying doesn't, doesn't always mean that we're not going to uh, design cutting edge or, or innovative experiences. This is a, a non-healthcare example. It's a short video that just shows how we can create intuitive user experiences um, while still interacting with a lot of uh, complex data. I'm a little bit short on time. So th the last point I have is about empowered patients. And this is one of the biggest trends we're experiencing where um, all of this amazing technology is allowing people to self-manage their conditions. Um, this particular example here is um, a collaboration with S3 Connected Health. And they built this incredible um, system that could uh, monitor a patient's behavior when it came to their medication regime, and they were able to predict when they were about to slip, um, to slip up on their adhe adherence. 
and they asked us to design the, 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 the end user experience. And we needed to, we realized very quickly this became about behavior change. How can we actually help, help these users to change their behavior? So we needed to use uh, tools like um, behavior economics, um, like gamification, to engage and to encourage them, to give them positive um, affirmations, um, to design this complex system and to be able to send them interventions that they could learn about their condition so that they know they're making the right choices and the peace of mind of knowing that your clinician or physician is um, aware of your current status. And one point here, another tool that we use that is relatively underrated in the healthcare industry is uh, beauty. So when we as humans experience beauty, it triggers the reward center in our brain and gives us a kick of dopamine, which is related to joy and desirable experiences. Um, and particularly when it comes to home health, where we're actually designing experiences for people in the context of living their lives, we're not trying to design cold clinical um, medical devices that might remind them that they're ill, but we're, we're, we're trying to design uh, frictionless, seamless, effortless experiences that fit into their lives. So, so these are the three primary trends that we're witnessing here, the connected services where we're, we're talking about uh, a user-first approach, now the tech-first approach, how we should be thinking about connecting the people here, empathetic data, where we need to find the drivers to apply the right filters to how we present that, and then empowered patients actually looking at that shift on how the patient experience is moving towards their home, and that that, how that might change how we present the data. Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning, this big shift towards measurable outcomes in healthcare, the only way to really fuel it is if designers and data scientists and analysts and engineers and prototypers all connect together to be able to create these meaningful experiences. Thank you.